Okay, so today I'm going to try to do a video on a axle, rear axle, uh, front axle will be pretty much identical, on a uh, telehandler that we have here. And it's a Dana Spicer axle. And these are pretty common throughout a bunch of different machines. The one I'm working on is in a JLG 9K. Uh, the 10 and 12K are larger, but should be pretty much the same. Most of these heavy-duty axles, they're not as difficult as you, uh, you might think they are. They're all really the same concept. They might just have different ways of accessing and uh, holding some of the assemblies. But they're nothing to be afraid of. And you I haven't been able to find any videos on this subject matter, so I'm going to try to put something out there. So let's start with uh, the two problems I've had with this axle here and uh, the last machine I was working on as well is leaky brake seals. So on this machine... Uh, we have the axle assembly there and I have this is your slave cylinder here and your slave cylinder on this axle will sit inside here and this will be your brake line feeding from a distribution block in the cab and I'll get into that distribution block in a bit more detail uh, later on but what you're gonna want at the start of this is to find this line here and put a cap on it because the way your parking brake works is you will when the machines not on there's some sort of mechanism that forces fluid down these lines constantly and there's actually two different ways to release the brakes on this and again I'll get to that later on but so first off I'll get into diagnosis here uh, the, the reason I pulled this axle apart was actually from a different issue we had a final drive that didn't see any oil for a very long time and pretty much exploded but uh, it just happened to be uh, that I figured I was in here already so I might as well do the brake seals and found some other problems as well we have on here a bunch of broken studs that are the retention plate that pushes back on the slave cylinder that were busted so uh, again in diagnosis if you have a telehandler that seems to be really gutless in some of its gears, especially second gear, uh, it might be that your retention plate has busted off and your uh, brakes are pretty much dragging. But on the last machine that I did the brake seals in, the problem we run into was the machine was constantly eating hydraulic fluid and we couldn't figure out where it was going. It took about a pail and a half before uh, well before we were made aware of the problem and they said the breather valve uh, must have been clogged because it just decided to pop and then it dumped a uh, about a half a pail of fluid on the ground and it was doing that periodically so we brought it in here and uh, you know I went went through it and uh, did a really long way around of diagnosing the problem um, if if this machine if the, really the easiest way to do this is just pull your drain plug uh, let's see here I think it was in the housing actually uh, it might be either here or in this housing here if that fluid level is way over full you've got leaky brake uh, brake seals that's just the way it is um, now to diagnose which side it is I actually hooked up a porta power to each one of these slave cylinders 
and uh, figured out which one was bypassing so that I didn't have to tear them both apart. But really, realistically, thinking back on it now, we should have just done both of the both sides. It's not that much work to get in here. I'll show you a couple tricks on how to take the final drive off. Um, but this uh, this this really isn't that that bad of a job. So your brake seals are leaking. You've determined that. You're going to want to bring it into your shop and block whichever side up and then you can get to the final drive which I don't have on that side because well there you go there's uh, there's parts of it this uh, this is what happens when you know you don't oil things the bearing went and some of the uh, large roller bearings got caught up in the ring gear and extruded it out of the case it's uh, it's not good so your brakes are leaking you've got it in the shop you got it jacked up you're going to want to pull your final drive off your whole knuckle here and this will be attached to here with kingpins and I'll grab you okay uh, sorry about that I had to reset the camera so I was just going to get into the kingpin but I wanted to also mention something that I forgot in this same axle uh, I think I think it's pretty much an identical axle, but this piece here, this section right here, can be uh, exchanged with uh, another axle of the same size that has the piston, sorry, the slave cylinder in this section of the housing. This piece right here, in, in fact, will actually be the slave cylinder and your brake line will come in right here it'll just be a reverse assembly so I think these are even interchangeable with the last axle I worked on you could just keep the final drive and the differential and interchange these between the two uh, which we're thinking about doing if I'm not able to fix this piece here so I'll get back to how to remove the final drive. We have, this is the bottom. Bottom kingpin has the beveled edges. The top kingpin straight. And what I do is when you pull the bolts out of here, uh, you're really gonna want a crane when you're working with this. I did it with a forklift once. It was uh, not too bad, but it's going to be much easier parked under some kind of crane. So when you drop the bolts out of this top cap, as long as it's not seized up, this should, by the weight of the knuckle, force itself out on its own. Then what you'll be able to do is throw about a stack of three-quarter inch washers in here, uh, a stack of six, and then put this back in here and when that forces down on that that'll push your bottom knuckle out now if you're lucky that won't come out with too much trouble but most likely you're gonna have to put a bunch of heat on this and you know pull every trick you got out of the bag uh, these bolts usually come out pretty easy but you know any C's is super important when putting this back together I, I won't get into it but it's just you know we should be any season most of this stuff and if I don't remember to say this in the end you need to be loctiting these as well any bolts that are submerged 
in oil, that operate in oil, uh, and these holes in particular need to be cleaned really well because they're blind holes, uh, and the threads need to be cleaned and loctited, medium strength, I would recommend, so that we don't get this issue. The reason I think the, this, the bolts on this uh, retention plate snapped is because uh, they just they just worked themselves out. You know, whoever worked on it last maybe never cleaned the holes out properly. There's probably oil in there, caused a hydrostatic lock, and then once the pressure releases, they just worked themselves out. So, okay, we've got the knuckle off now. We've got the final drive off. Set that to the side. You've got uh, a seal and a bushing in there to replace. You've got a seal in your axle housing. I didn't mention the axle shaft, your spindle. Those have some seals on them as well. Your axle shaft has a retention bolt right here. That sits in this groove so right there. Once you release that bolt, that axle shaft will just slide right out. These are full floating axles, uh, which basically means that the axle shaft is not uh, retained in the differential so that you can snap the axle shaft and not have to worry about uh, you know anything too dangerous happening okay so yeah we removed the housing and let's see here yeah then once this line is off you're able to take out your slave cylinder and you're going to have your clutch well uh, I call it a clutch pack this is the same uh, sort of friction uh, setup you would see in an automatic transmission or a clutch on a bike this assembly here your brake, wet brakes, they just remember how they came out. We have a little bit of, uh, see if I can catch this on the camera, we have a little bit of bluing on here because it was rotting for so long. Um, those marks on this plate here are from uh, a system of releasing the brakes mechanically from the outside of the housing. This is one of those methods you can use to move your machine by forcing these bolts in to push on the slave cylinder in case you can't start the machine but you need to be able to uh, to move it. I would honestly recommend just pulling this brake line off. If you don't put those bolts in equally, uh, I think it's quarter or half turn at a time, you could wedge the slave cylinder and uh and cause some damage so i think you should be able to uh get yourself a cap plug this line off and then just uh leave that open to air and it should be able to move so those are brakes pretty simple uh where is that slave cylinder at I have another one right here. This is your retention plate. This is where the bolts with the springs will mount into. Here is a full clutch pack. If you do end up having to put new brakes in this, uh, you need to soak your friction discs on any sort of uh, this wet, wet brake or wet clutch system. Okay, so. slave cylinder. You have these O-rings in it, and you're gonna have a flat and a round, and then a round and a flat. And then that will cause a seal going this way and this way, so you don't get fluid passing in either direction. Uh, pretty simple. 
So we got leaky brakes. We've got riding brakes. Now, I'll just mention something about the spindle, or sorry, the final drive here. Uh, these seals are going to be the ones that you're going to have to replace most commonly. And the ones that are probably original from the factory, uh, which is the reason that leaked the oil out so quickly. Uh, you know, they're really not that difficult to change. You, gotta, you pull or you pull that seal out. There's a bushing in there. I don't know how important it is to change that bushing. It's uh, probably not that difficult to take out. I haven't before just because I was in a hurry. I will on this axle. So you pull that final drive off. You pull your axle shaft out. And here's the trick. Here's where you're going to save a bunch of money. You're going to have these grooves on your axle shaft. And you may, if you're really on top of your maintenance, you may be able to do the seals often enough so that you don't have to get this resurfaced every time you do your seals. But if it's worn as bad as these ones are, this is going to take your seals out pretty quickly. So what we do is we pull this apart and we send this off to a machine shop and not every machine shop is going to tell you that this is possible but it is absolutely possible you can find a machine shop that can resurface this for you and save yourself you know probably five to six hundred dollars uh, it might take them some time don't expect to get this done right away but as soon as you get that back do your seals uh, reassembly is pretty pretty simple like I say any any bolt that's working in an, in a in a wet environment needs Loctite uh, you should be anti seizing most of your other bolts you don't have to get too carried away on most bolts those king pins I would slop it on though uh, these ones were a nightmare those bottom king pins on this one Luckily, I found that uh, the trick with the washers. It was still pretty difficult, though. So, these bolts here, for mostly small bolts, I was just torquing to, uh, I don't even remember. But, oh, that's uh, something that's really important. The manual for all your specs, and, and really, I think it's a, it's a full service manual for all JLG equipment is posted online. And this these axles here, you'll find... In a bunch of different machines and even axles that are different than this uh, are going to be engineered pretty much the same so you can you know transfer over torque specs for similar size bolts you doing similar functions uh, but what's great about JLG and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna blow them a little bit here these are by far my favorite machines they are the easiest to work on the most reliable they're beautiful machines. They and they post their service manuals online. You can find all this information, uh, possibly even more digestible than what I'm giving you here. But I looked and looked and looked, and I couldn't find any videos on this. So having an idea what's in here, so you know what you're getting yourself into. You're going to need about a pail of hydraulic fluid. That's another thing I should mention is I thought this would take gear oil and I accidentally put gear oil in one of these axles once when I was doing a service. Uh, luckily, it ended up having to go in for repairs and got the fluid changed out within a couple months anyways. But this is actually hydraulic fluid, which is likely because these bypassing seals are pretty common. So you don't want you get mixing fluids. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. I, I torque these to uh, about 80 pounds uh, in, a, in a very kind of convoluted sort of star fashion just to keep everything torqued down equally. And I don't think I have much else to say about this. So 
that's uh, Dana Spicer axle. Uh, some service and repair information. Hopefully, hopefully you can find this useful.